Tonight, Apple and IBM go big on enterprise apps. Instagram is more popular than Twitter. And live channels come to Android TV. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 232 for Wednesday, December 10th, 2014. This episode is brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace recently launched the latest version of their platform, Squarespace 7, which has a completely redesigned interface, integrations with Getty Images and Google Apps, new templates, and a feature called Cover Pages, which is incredible. Try the new Squarespace at squarespace.com and enter the offer code TECHNIGHT at checkout and you'll get 10% off. Hi, everybody. I'm Sarah Lane, and let's get right into the tech feed. Apple has announced the first wave of iOS apps being released through its partnership with IBM, which the companies announced earlier this year. Ten apps designed for businesses like banking, retail, insurance, financial services, telecommunications, and airlines are now available as IBM's mobile first for iOS offering. Apple notes that the apps offer customizable experiences and are managed and upgraded via cloud services from IBM specifically for iOS devices. Further integration with IBM's mobile platform and enterprise solutions is on the way, as well as Apple Care for the enterprise. Ah, enterprise and Apple and IBM, it's a Anyway, Microsoft has started the process of integrating Bing search into Office. Speaking of enterprise, this is starting with Word Online. So that's the version of Word that you would access via the browser. The new embedded search capability is called Insights for Office. And Microsoft is rolling out worldwide capacity where Bing is available anyway, starting today. It'll probably roll out for, for the next few days, reports Mary Jo Foley. Word Online will now have an inline box that would let a user type what they want to search or right-click on a highlighted word or phrase to pull up a search result inside the document itself. This, of course, keeps people away from having to switch to a browser from a doc or a search engine, pull up information, and then somehow copy and paste that information back into the document. In other words, it's convenience. Mobile payments provider Charge Anywhere LLC, you might not be familiar with them, but as a merchant, you might, announced today that malicious software planted on its networks may have jeopardized credit card data from transactions the company handled between way back in November 2009 and September of this year. Charge Anywhere says that it launched an investigation after it received complaints about fraudulent charges on cards that had been legitimately used at certain merchants. The information stolen includes customer names, card numbers, expiration dates, verification codes, all of it. The company says that it believes only files containing the segments of captured network traffic from August 17th to, uh, of 2014 through September 24th through 2014 were identified, but that the unauthorized access might have captured network traffic as early as November 5th, 2009, and that outgoing messages on the network were not always fully encrypted. The company has provided a searchable list of merchants who may have been affected by the breach. All right, let's talk about Instagram, because as I mentioned earlier in the show, it's more popular than Twitter, at least if you are looking at a particular metric. In order to help us understand a little bit more what's going on is Kurt Wagner, reporter at Recode. Hey, Kurt. Hey, uh, thanks for having me. Well, thanks for being here. You wrote the article, Instagram has 300 million users and is now larger than Twitter. I guess it, it, maybe it's because I'm just used to these huge networks that have all these users, but I didn't realize that Twitter didn't even have that many, you know, monthly active users. Yeah, I think a lot of people were surprised uh, to find out today that Instagram is, I guess, by this monthly active user metric, bigger than Twitter. But uh, for those people who've been following Twitter pretty closely, especially people who are uh, in the financial industry um, on Wall Street, they've been kind of talking about Twitter's growth and Twitter size for quite a long time. Um, they, it's always kind of, since they've gone public a little over a year ago, it's always been something that people have been, uh, paying attention to. So it's not totally surprised for those of us who've been following Twitter closely, but I think a lot of people did not think of Instagram as being on the same level. Yeah, Facebook paid a billion dollars or thereabouts, mm -hmm. which was huge news back in 2012. You know, it's, it, we weren't paying a billion dollars for little startups back then, but now it's par for the course. Yeah. 100 million users have joined since March of this year. So quite a bit of growth in 2014 alone to grow to over 300 million monthly active users. Is it something that Facebook did behind the scenes or is Instagram just still on the rise? I think that I'm going to give credit to Instagram on this one. I think that Instagram 
is so great and so many people like it because it's still so simple, right? I mean, uh, really the bulk of the actions that you would take on Instagram are you take a photo, you put a cool filter on it and you share it with your friends. And I think that people really have taken to that uh, kind of quick, easy way of sharing photo uh, photos that's not quite as um, broad as you might see on Facebook. But I think one of the things that, that Facebook does for Instagram is it gave it the safety net, if you will, to uh, move slowly in other areas. So for example, Instagram recently started doing ads about a year ago. And as an independent company, it might've had to push that up, right? It might've had to start advertising earlier. That might've killed some of the, the, the user vibe, but because they knew they had Facebook behind it, supporting it, it could do that really slowly and, and kind of uh, roll out features like that in a way that not a lot of startups can do. So I think Facebook provided a safety net, but I think that this was an Instagram a success story. Facebook has well, over 1 billion regular users. Uh, yeah. Facebook Messenger has 500 million. That was a, a recent metric. WhatsApp, which was also bought by Facebook, has 600 million users. Do you see, do you see some of these uh, Facebook-owned apps converging? Because as you mentioned, besides introducing ads, for the most part, Facebook has really left Instagram alone. Yeah, that's a tough question, and I think it's one that a lot of us have been thinking about for a long time. So when Facebook first bought WhatsApp in February, I, for one, thought, okay, that means that Facebook Messenger is going to be gone, right? Why would they need WhatsApp and a, a Facebook message, uh, messaging platform as well? And yet, Messenger has grown in leaps and bounds just since uh, February. So at this point, it looks like they're going to kind of let all of these different verticals stand on their own. I think that they all complement one another. And maybe that's where the, the magic is here is that um, because it's a lot to roll these types of services into one uh, social network being Facebook, they've been able to say, OK, well, these are all things that people love. It's hard to cram them all together. So let's just build them separately and be happy with that. And if all goes well, that means that Facebook now has four different products that they can monetize as opposed to just one. So if they have hundreds of millions of users using four different apps, I think that that's much uh, more beneficial to them in the long run. I saw a little note when I was checking my latest round of Instagram replies up at the top of my feed this morning mm -hmm. that, that uh, I might uh, lose some followers because Instagram is going to start deactivating spam accounts. Sounds great to me. Probably, I don't know, there's an ego issue with certain people who just really care about the number. But along with that, uh, the, uh, the company plans to verify brands, celebrities or athletes or, you know, people in the know, people in the public figure. Facebook already does that. I wonder why they just don't roll over that data into Instagram accounts. Or maybe there's just not enough people who are using both regularly. Well, I think that uh, this kind of plays into what we were just talking about is them viewing Instagram as a separate service. And a lot of people have a, uh, a presence on Facebook but they do something completely different on Instagram. I, I know me personally, my Facebook is ma majority uh, just my close friends uh, and family, but at the same time, there are people who actually follow me on Facebook, whereas for me, Instagram is solely a, a personal account. So not that I'm saying that I would be verified, but I think there, there are a <laughs> lot of people who would be verified that maybe are using it in the same way. I, think I so, totally agree with you. They, my my they, accounts they don't. keep them separate. Yeah, my my uh, Instagram and Facebook accounts don't really they they yeah they they don't look like each other at all. So I get what you're saying, um, absolutely. So 300 million users, uh, bigger than Twitter, different than Twitter, but it's amazing totally. how uh, how far a a what seemed like a very simple uh, picture app has come. Yeah, absolutely. I I think if I could just say one last thing, I think you that can. the the. Uh, the Twitter comparison, obviously, in terms of monthly actives, right, we, we've already established Instagram's a little bit bigger, but I think where Twitter would argue that case is they would say, but our tweets are public and our tweets are on ESPN and our tweets are on USA, uh, you know, the Today Show and our tweets are all over, whereas uh, uh, Instagram is still a very private network for the mm -hmm. most part. So you're not seeing a lot of Instagram content off of Instagram, whereas Twitter, you are. So that would be Twitter's argument if they were in my uh, seat right now. They would say, yes, they may have more monthly active users but we actually have a bigger reach. So it'll be interesting to see how that kind of plays out moving forward. Kurt Wagner reports over at Recode, and thanks so much for being with us on Tech News Tonight. Kurt, before we let you go, remind folks where they can keep up with you. Absolutely. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter, at Kurt Wagner 8, and uh, you can read my work as well as uh, the work from my colleagues at Recode.net. Excellent. Thanks so much, Kurt. Thanks for having me. Coming up, eBay might lay off thousands of employees. We'll tell you more about that. And live video is coming to Android TV. But first, 
Let's thank Squarespace.com for bringing us this episode, shall we? Squarespace recently launched the latest version of their platform. It's Squarespace 7. They're already up to 7. Totally redesigned interface. Makes it just a lot easier, even though it was already really easy. Now it is like dead simple to create your own professional website or online portfolio. I've been using Squarespace for years. I've always been really happy with a lot of the templates that, that they have for you right out of the gate. And Squarespace 7 just makes getting started that much easier. You can live edit on one screen. It just simplifies the process. No toggling back and forth to see. Uh, you make a little change and then you have to toggle over to see how your site looks. It's all in one place now. And you can preview all your designs in device mode. So you can see how your site will look on a variety of tablets and mobile devices. Everything's a different size these days. So you got to make sure that your site looks good. Getty Images. $10 each. This is a new service. You have inst instant access to search for professional stock photography from Getty and bring that right into uh, a, an update or, or, or design anything on your Squarespace site. And the company also designed category specific templates that cater to different industries. If you're a musician, you can get up and running in minutes flat or an artist or, or maybe you're an architect. There's all sorts of stuff that Squarespace realizes it's an industry that works really well with professional websites. E Commerce is available for all the subscription plan levels. You can accept donations. Starts at just $8 per month and includes a free domain name if you sign up for a year. Squarespace is really mobile ready. There are a variety of apps, the portfolio app, the note app, the metric app, the blog app, all on the go extensions of your website. Monitor everything. Make changes from anywhere. Doesn't matter. You don't have to be home. You don't have to be in your office anymore. Squarespace goes with you wherever you go and hosting is included. So Squarespace takes care of the hosting and you never have to even think about it. Start a free two-week trial with no credit card required and start building your website. Two weeks, completely free. Nobody will ask you for a dime. When you decide to sign up for Squarespace, make sure to use the offer code TECHNIGHT and you'll get 10% off. By the way, if you're an existing customer and you want to use Squarespace 7, you just go to the settings tab and you activate all these new features. It's like, you know, being under the tree. Thanks, Squarespace. We thank Squarespace for their support of Tech News Tonight. Squarespace, start here. Go anywhere. On to a few more stories that we're following today. eBay may eliminate thousands of jobs early next year as it prepares to split off its PayPal payments unit. This is according to people familiar with the company speaking to the Wall Street Journal. The cuts would reportedly primarily affect workers in eBay's core marketplace division and could cut at least 3,000 jobs or 10% of its total workforce. The marketplace division, which includes eBay.com and StubHub, is currently more profitable than PayPal, but growth has slowed and the company has continued competition from Amazon and Alibaba to contend with. eBay said back in September that it would indeed spin off its PayPal unit by the end of next year, creating two publicly traded companies. The company had 33,500 employees at the end of 2013, which was split pretty evenly between PayPal and eBay's marketplace unit. The last major job cuts were back in 2012 when PayPal cut about 325 full-time positions. Let's talk about cars. So, you know, in-car road services like OnStar, I've got an OnStar button in my car and it can track my location. And if I get into an accident, it could send me an ambulance automatically, something like that. However, your car manufacturer is storing this location information along with the date and the time of the incident and do the airbags get deployed and all sorts of little details that could come back to haunt you because it could track whether you are wearing a seatbelt, how fast you're going. Some people fear that automotive data being collected this way could be seized by, by the government, a spy agency, for example, or even used against drivers by insurers. So manufacturers are taking steps now to safeguard this information. Last month, two of the industry's biggest trade groups, the Alliance of Automobile Manufacturers and the Association of Global Automakers, Hadn't heard of those before, but they exist. Settled on a series of privacy commitments that will take effect on January 2nd, 2016. Things like updating owner's manuals, for example, so that a potential car owner knows exactly what data these vehicles will be collecting. Manufacturers will also be setting up websites, informing users of the data collection and linking directly to the privacy policies of third-party commercial partners. Google released a new app today called Live Channels for Android TV, that will eventually allow Android TV devices to watch live television. The app is currently available in the Google Play Store, but you can install it on any current phone or tablet that's running 
Google's mobile OS, Android. It's an Android TV app, which is different. And currently, the Nexus Player set-top box is your only choice. Now, that's just for now, as, as Android TV continues to be rolled out. Live channels for Android can display input from a built-in tuner, IP-based tuners, and stuff like that. Once you've got a signal, the app will offer standard TV features like picture-in-picture, -picture, closed captioning, and parental controls. Finally, this is sort of a sad one for me on a personal level, and you'll soon know why. So we all know that the internet is made of cats. That's just that's just science, right? But a different animal took the top spot on YouTube's list of its most popular videos from 2014, and that was the spider dog. That's right. Mutant giant spider dog has been crowned the top trending star on YouTube for the year. In fact, there wasn't a cat on the list at all. There was another dog, Budweiser's Puppy Love ad from the Super Bowl back in January. The trending data was compiled based on several criteria, shares and likes and responses, in an attempt to identify what got everybody talking in 2014, cumulatively. The videos were ranked according to total views as well. I should note that cats were also absent from YouTube's year-end roundups in 2012 and 2013. And that is why the world is going to hell, everybody. That is it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. You can subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. You can write us at TN2 at twit.tv. Leave us questions, comments, feedback, whatever. And watch live every weekday at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern. Tech News Today starts tomorrow at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. Hope you can catch both shows. I'm Sarah Lane. I'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by CashFly.com. Hi, this is Leo Laporte, and if you'd like to help us design our new website, I invite you to visit twit.to slash navtest. We've got eight quick questions we'd like to ask you that will help us make the navigation easier to use. That's twit.to dot to slash nav test. Thanks a lot.